what President Obama is asking the United States Congress to do is unique, historically and dangerously unique. The results could well be catastrophic. Former Vice President Dick Cheney earlier today at the American Enterprise Institute reiterating his strong opposition to the nuclear agreement with Iran. Forty-one senators have said they'll support this deal, potentially enough to give the president the votes he needs to prevent uh, any GOP efforts to block this deal. But a delegation of Orthodox Jewish rabbis and leaders from across the country will hold a gathering in our nation's capital to urge legislative leaders to oppose this agreement. The Orthodox Union Advocacy Center also held a press conference to help give voice to their opposition. For more, let's welcome in the executive director of the Orthodox Union Advocacy Center, Nathan Diamond. Nathan was also present at that press conference earlier today. He's Skyping in from Washington. Also joining us from Newsmax, Washington, the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. Uh, Nathan, let me get your thoughts on this. Your reaction to Dick Cheney's strong message today. Is his opposition and your group's opposition too little too late? Uh, I'm not sure that it's too little too late. Uh, certainly as a religious organization, uh, frankly, we believe that uh, uh, God will ultimately determine how things play out. Uh, it does seem like we don't have the votes uh, in the Senate uh, right now, but uh, you think things can happen to change that. And moreover, uh, this is only a chapter in a very long saga that's going to continue. We're bring, that's why we're bringing hundreds of rabbis to Washington tomorrow to make a moral statement against this immoral deal. And we want to talk more about that in just a second, Nathan, but let me turn to my old colleague from the Congress. Uh, Pete, you and I are both men of the House. Can you ascertain maybe we need divine guidance when it comes to the ways of the U.S. Senate, but is there anything you see reversing the trend and uh, unlocking some of those votes the president claims to have in favor of his stance? No, I think that uh, it's probably pretty clear that the president has the 41 votes that he needs, not only to sustain his deal, J.D., but more importantly, he may use those 41 votes to make sure that there's not even a vote on the agreement uh, in the United States Senate, that there may just be a vote to proceed, which will not pass. Uh, which means that there will not, the U.S. Senate will not even be on record as to who supports this agreement and who opposes this agreement other than through a procedural motion. Mm. Nathan, uh, you and members of your group, I believe, went in and met with the president, and you came away from that meeting convinced that this agreement will lead to a stronger Iran. What did the president say to you and other members of your group that, that led to, um, to this interpretation? Um, well, look, what's, what the president has answers uh, to many of the criticisms that have been brought up with regard to various provisions of the deal. Uh, we bring up the fact that um, there's a 24-day delay in inspections uh, uh, being able to occur at military sites around Iran. Uh, we bring up the fact that um, the set, Iran does not have to entirely dismantle um, all of its nuclear infrastructure. It just has to mothball some of it. And so in a period of time, they'll be able to, uh, to, to revive their nuclear weapons program. And the president has answers to all these things. What the president does not have an answer to, though, what is absolutely undeniable, is that if Iran sticks to this deal, First of all, in 15 years, they get to become a nuclear threshold state with the blessing of the international community. And secondly, much sooner than that, as soon as later this year, Iran will receive tens of billions of dollars in sanctions relief, and they'll be able to use that money for more mayhem and terrorism across the region. So whatever the answers are that are out there, what we've not heard an answer for, because there is no answer, is that this deal gives greater legitimacy and more great, greater power to the Iranian regime. And those are reasons enough that why the Congress should reject this deal. And reasons enough why you'll hold that rally tomorrow. Briefly, Pete, uh, Colin Powell showed up on NBC's Meet the Press on Sunday. Here's what he had to say about the proposed agreement. Let's take a listen, then we'll get your reaction. 
I think it is a good deal. I've studied very carefully the outline of the deal and what's in that deal. And I've also carefully looked at the opposition to the deal. And my judgment after balancing those two sets of information is that it's a pretty good deal. Uh, is that an honest assessment, Pete, or is this some sort of Washington score settling by the former Secretary of State? I don't know. I've got a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, you know, the former Secretary of State. I believe this is his honest assessment of this agreement, this deal. Uh, there are many people who just actually look at the same information and come to a very, very different uh, conclusion. Most importantly, J.D., the people of the Middle East are speaking out today. They've been speaking out for the last two weeks, the last month. They are fleeing the Middle East because they see more mayhem. They see more chaos. They see them emboldened and empowered. Uh, Iran. They see a weaker United States. It only and we will have to leave it there. Gentlemen, you have our thanks.